friends, welcome to Home Economics. We are going to make uh, some eggs today. In fact, we're going to make three different kinds of eggs, because today is the day that I show you my three favorite ways to cook eggs. But if you've been to Home Economics before, you know that before we get into even touching the eggs, we have to do a very important thing, which is to wash our hands. Now, you can use the same technique to make a soft boiled egg, but the timing is a lot trickier. So, I always find that it's easier to say, I'm making hard boiled eggs. And if it gets kind of soft and gooey, then it's an extra surprise. To make a hard boiled egg, you are going to need a pot full of water. You are going to need a bowl with cold water and ice cubes. And you are going to need something to take the egg out of the hot water and put it into the cold water. And of course, you are going to need an egg. We're going to start by putting our egg into the water. And even though there's only one egg in the pot, there's quite a bit of water there. It's almost all the way covering the egg. You can also have water that covers the egg. That's totally fine. You can't really have too much water, but it definitely should be covering most of the egg. So I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to turn my heat on to kind of medium high and then I'm going to watch carefully because as soon as my water comes to a boil then I'm going to have to turn it down. Boiling is one of the most useful states of water that we can have in the kitchen. When water is boiling there are tiny bubbles that start at the bottom of the pot um, kind of on the base and that come up to the top of the water and pop. And when it's really boiling, those bubbles are really, really big, and there's lots of steam coming off, and it's very easy to tell when water has boiled. It's a little bit harder to tell when water is simmering, but we are going to watch for it together, because after this pot comes to a boil, we are going to need to make it simmer. Look at this guy. This water is boiling. You can see it's got lots and lots of bubbles that are pop, 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 popping at the surface and you can also see the steam. Or maybe you can't, but I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the lid on and I'm gonna turn my heat down because I want this to be boiling less. And you can hear the egg kind of ding around a little bit, but that's okay, it's not gonna break. There we are. So you can see that there aren't as many big bubbles now. It's not quite down to a simmer. Um, it's just down at a, at a slower boil, but it's gonna, it's gonna get simmery soon. So while this is here, we're gonna put on the timer for three minutes. So after three minutes, we're gonna turn off the stove. And here is our bowl with ice in it. Oh yeah, that's cool. And I'm going to lift out my egg and put it in the water with the ice. And I'm gonna leave it there for 10 minutes. Now, you could probably take it out sooner, but then it's gonna be really hard to peel. And the reason that we put our egg in ice water is twofold. First, we want to stop something that we call carry over cooking. Carry over cooking is when you've been cooking some something, not someone, my goodness, You've been cooking something and you take it off the heat so there's no fire there anymore it's not on a hot stove it's not in an oven but the pan is hot still and the food is hot still so it keeps cooking using its own heat and we don't want that to happen with our egg because overcooked hard-boiled eggs get like a kind of weird greenish or grayish color around the outside of the yolk and it's not bad it just looks strange. The second reason why we want to soak our hard-boiled egg in ice water 
is because we want to make a very quick change in temperature. And that very quick change in temperature is going to do something that's going to help us to get that egg out of its shell. What it's going to do is it's going to help create a layer of air between the shell and the egg so that when we're ready to peel the shell off, it doesn't try to stick and take out clumps of egg with it. So my hard boiled egg has been resting for 10 minutes and it's pretty cold now. So I'm going to show you how to take its shell off and then I'm going to show you my mom's favorite way of eating a hard boiled egg. So onto your clean counter or cutting board or any other flat surface, you're going to put your egg and you're going to use your hand to crunch and roll the egg so that the shell is cracked all over. And then what you're going to do is you're going to carefully, carefully start taking the shell off. And I like to put my pieces of shell into my bowl of cold water that I've just taken the egg out of because that is the easiest place to make sure that I get all of the bits of shell and don't have to clean them up after. So you can see here that the shell is coming off pretty easily. Now, if you get in really close, what you can see is that under the shell, there's this little thin layer right here that looks kind of like a piece of cloth. And that is really what you want to get your fingers under. Because if you once you get that, then the shell can come off in big sheets. But here you want to keep going slowly so that you only get shell off. If you get a little bit of egg with your shell, that's not a huge problem, but it's a lot nicer to have just the shell off so you don't have like lumps of egg that you're throwing away. That would be very sad. Now I'm going to show you my mom's favorite way of eating a hard boiled egg. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut it. Whoops. Hmm. I'm going to cut it like that. And then what my mom always does is she takes the yolk out. She takes the yolk out. And then she puts a little bit of red wine vinegar. You can use any kind of vinegar here. Cider vinegar is also delicious. And a little bit of olive oil. And a little bit of salt. And then she puts the egg yolk back in, and then and then she pops it in her mouth. The second kind of egg that we're going to make is a poached egg. Poached eggs are really tricky. But when you've practiced them a bunch of times, you can make the most perfect, impressive egg. Poached eggs are actually my favorite kind of egg to eat because they're really soft, you can really taste all the good eggy flavors, um, and because they go with just about everything. So to make a poached egg, a perfect poached egg, what you need is a pot of water and about a tablespoon of white vinegar. Now, this is going to make your egg taste a little vinegary, but it is also going to help the egg white to congeal. And what that means is when you pop the egg into the water, the egg white is going to want to like float away, kind of like a jellyfish. Um, but what you want it to do is you want it to all stick together, and the vinegar is going to help it do that. So I'm going to pour the vinegar into my water, and then I'm going to turn the water on. You're also going to need a whisk, something to take the egg out with, and a small bowl that you can crack your egg into. So once you've got your whisk, your slotted spoon, or another kind of spoon that you can take your egg out with, your egg cracked into a little bowl, and your pot with water and vinegar, then you're ready to get started. Right now, we're waiting for our water to get to poaching temperature. Now, poaching temperature is the hardest temperature to hit. Poaching has to be very, very gentle, so not a lot of bubbles at all. 
If you look, you can see that there are already some small bubbles starting to form on the bottom of the pot. Now what we want to see them do is we want to see them slowly rise to the top of the water. And when they're slowly rising to the top of the water, ooh, just like that, when there are a whole bunch of little bubbles on the bottom that are doing that, but are not whooping at the top, they're just drifting up, then we will be at poaching. But once you've got your water poaching, you want to turn down the heat so that you keep it that way. Now, that might take a little bit of experimentation. Um, you might need to turn your stove up and down a few times just to get it right. When it is ready and you know that you've got the temperature set, you're going to take your whisk and you're going to go around and around and around to make a whirlpool. So you see the whirlpool in the water? That's very important because that's going to help the egg white to up around the yolk. So we're going to make our whirlpool and then we're going to use our egg in the bowl and we're going to drop our egg right into the middle of the whirlpool. Isn't that beautiful? I love to watch a poached egg. So we're going to leave this in here for somewhere between one minute and three minutes. And that really depends on how cooked you want your egg yolk to be. So for sure, one minute. And after one minute, then you can use your sp slotted spoon to lift it out and then test if the egg yolk is as hard as you want it. And you can do that by poking it just a little bit. So I'm just gonna lift this egg up a little bit and I can poke it here. Now I'm gonna use my finger, but you can also use a spoon or anything else just to see. And you can see my finger goes in quite far. That means that the egg yolk is still very runny. Now, if you like your egg yolk runny, that's the time to take it out. But if you like it a little harder, you can leave it in and about every 30 seconds or so, you can lift it out and poke it. And this next time I'll show you poking it with a knife just to see. So, I'm going to check it again and see it's still pretty soft, but I like my poached eggs to be pretty soft. So I'm going to lift it out and look, if you see in the water, there's no egg left. Well, there's a little tiny, tiny bit of egg left in the water, but the rest of it has stuck around and that is because of the vinegar. So I'm going to put it on my plate and I'm going to put Then I'm going to cut it open so you can see what it looks like. Don't forget to turn off your stove. Look at that go. So that's about a minute and a half of just one egg. And you only want to do one egg at a time. So that's why poaching eggs isn't always the best option if you have to feed a lot of people. Um, because you can only do them one at a time. And... It's really tough. You have to wait a couple of minutes for every one, and then by the time you get them all done, then the first one is cold. But if you're just making one or two eggs, it's really quite delicious. The third type of egg that we're going to make is a scrambled egg. Now, a scrambled egg is the best kind of egg for when you're in a hurry or if you have a whole lot of people to feed. The basic math goes like this. You want two eggs for one person. You want five eggs for two people. And so on and so forth. Add two more eggs for each person, plus another egg every two people. So if you want three people, you have two eggs for one person, plus three eggs, plus another two eggs, makes seven eggs. If you want to cook for four people, you need two eggs and three eggs is five eggs. Plus two eggs and three eggs is another five eggs. So 10 eggs for four people. It sounds like a lot, but eggs actually have quite a bit of water in them. And that water is gonna 
out of the pan and you're gonna be left with not a lot. So I'm gonna take these beautiful two eggs just for me and I'm going to make some scrambled eggs. So to make scrambled eggs, you are going to need a little bit of butter. I use about a tablespoon for every two eggs. And you are going to need two eggs, obviously, and a pan, and some kind of heat-proof spatula. Now this one isn't very bendy. And the reason that that is, is because my pan and my stove, the eggs really like to stick. And so I find that it's a lot easier if I have a really stiff spatula to make sure that things stick a little bit less. But you'll want to experiment with your pan and your stove to see what the best way is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my butter and my eggs and put them right in my pan. So I haven't turned my stove on yet, but into this pan I have my two eggs and my butter and they're cold and my pan is cold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my heat on now and then I'm going to stir the butter and the eggs together. Now if you don't have butter in the house or you don't like butter you can use um, another kind of solid fat uh, like coconut oil or lard if you're the kind of family that has lard in the house. But any solid fat is what you want because as it melts, you're using it to help kind of whip up the eggs a little bit, get some air into them. And then what we're also doing is we are breaking up the egg yolks and the egg whites and mixing them all together. And you can see that we're already starting to cook around the edge here. So I'm gonna turn my pan down a little bit because my dad always used to say, eggs will cook on a hot sidewalk. And it's true, eggs don't need very high heat. So look at that, my butter is mostly all melted and my whites and my yolks are kind of coming together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start pushing just like this. And as I push, what I'm doing is I'm creating curds. Big, fat, beautiful lumps of cooked egg that I'm scraping off the bottom of my pan so that the bottom of the pan, which is what's hot, has space on it for the eggs that are still liquidy and raw. And you can also push in the other direction. You can push side to side. but you wanna keep doing it very slowly. Give the hot pan time to cook eggs into nice fat chunks. And you'll see that gradually, the amount of eggs in the pan seems like it's getting smaller as it gets cooked and brought together into clumps. And you can kind of turn it over a little bit at this point so that it, all the sides get cooked. And you can see how fast this is going. This is a lot faster than a poached egg, and it's a lot faster than a hard boiled egg for sure. Now look at what I've got here. There's still a little bit of shiny in my egg, and that's good because when it gets to be all dry, so there's no shiny left at all, then it's gonna be all the way cooked. Now remember, carryover cooking is important to think about. So at this point, while I just have a little tiny bit of uncooked left, I'm gonna turn my pan off and I'm gonna get ready to put it on my plate. So my eggs are gonna keep cooking even as I put them on the plate. Remember that's carryover cooking. So the heat of the eggs is gonna keep cooking themselves. Get all that out of the pan. And now while they're still hot, I'm going to take some cheese, put it on, beautiful cheese, and a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and voila, I'm ready to eat my scrambled eggs. Now, two important things to know. 
You don't need cheese. Cheese is just because I like to eat my scrambled eggs with cheese. You could put anything else in here if you wanted. Kind of when you're starting to get curds in your pan, you could throw in green peppers or ham or peas or maybe not carrots, but spinach. Just about any kind of vegetable that you want and even some meat if you are the kind of person who eats meat can be popped right in the pan and cooked along with your eggs. Um, but I really like it best with cheese. And I find that it's best to put the cheese on after it's out of the pan because cheese really likes to stick to pans. Now, there are dozens, if not more, of ways to cook eggs. But um, these are my three favorites. And they're the three that I think are the easiest for people who are very small or not so small to do at home. So if you have watched this video and you are a small or a not so small person, you might wanna ask your parents, hey, can I make breakfast tomorrow? Or why not, hey, can I make supper tomorrow? Eggs for dinner. Who would have thought?